Uh, so who deployed the taser first? I did. Okay. Why? Uh, because the measures beforehand didn't work. That is Deputy Lindsay Fickett. Solicitor Scarlett Wilson's report today included multiple files of state investigators questioning her. This is right after the death of Jamal Sutherland. We're going through all these new videos in the case right now. Now, Wilson announced today no charges would be filed in Sutherland's death. She says she cannot prove criminal intent. Both Wilson and an expert on police force called out the practices and policies set by the Sheriff's Department dating back more than a decade. Our Tara Jabor spoke with former Sheriff Al Cannon about the criticism. Dean Al Cannon was the Charleston County Sheriff for 33 years. He wouldn't talk about the specifics of the Jamal Sutherland case, but he did respond to the critics of his policies and procedures. Former Sheriff Al Cannon says his words to the Sutherland family would be a sincere apology. Tragic outcome, and I am, I am so sorry uh, that this happened. Uh, as a parent, I, to the extent humanly possible, can relate to the idea, this, just the idea of losing a child. And While remorseful, Cannon says deaths do happen in jails. That running a jail is a serious business, and, and bad things are going to happen in there sometimes. There are instances where inmates will kill other inmates. There are, inma there are situations where inmates will kill uh, detention officers. Cannon's last day on the job was two days before Jamal Sutherland's death, and he says in the seven months since his death, he has not watched the video, but he does have this question. I think those people went there with the intention of killing the man. I don't think that's an answer to any uh, questions. It occurs sometimes, even when you don't want it to occur. Gary Rainey was brought in by solicitor Scarlett Wilson. He is an expert in use of force and deaths in jails. He pointed criticisms at the detention center's policies and procedures. As they started, they, be, they failed to employ adequate de-escalation techniques. That's a word we commonly know now in law enforcement. It's an expectation in law enforcement. It's an expectation in jails. And their efforts were again inadequate. They, there was insufficient staffing in the jail to do a cell extraction. Here's a guy, and I think he's dead wrong in his assessment, that he finds fault with the approach that we take this rapid response team and the policies and the training that is associated with that. Al Cannon says officers face a lot of challenges on their day-to-day -day duties. He says it's easy for everyone to point a finger at him since he's retired. And he took one final shot at the report. Problem is they're trying to be gladiators instead of guardians. Well, that is very short-sighted in my opinion. The fact of the matter is, folks, there are times, and fortunately it's the most of the time, where police officers and detention officers are acting as guardians, but there's also time that they need to act like gladiators. And Solicitor Wilson says that South Carolina is one of eight states where excessive force laws aren't in the books. Working for you live in the studio, Tara Jabor, ABC News 4.